so, we're finally back with a new video. We would like to thank you for your patience. In many modern forums of discussion, forward-thinking electronic music, especially that with an emphasis on sound design, is often labelled with the term deconstructed. While we definitely feel some type of way about this term, we also acknowledge that it is, in some regards, kind of on point. Creatively, as you spend more time honing your craft, you become more familiar with the limits of your tools. If you push them hard enough, they will eventually break. Luckily, in Ableton, nothing actually breaks, except perhaps for your notion of what is right or wrong to do. The rarest sounds exist on the fringes of what is possible, and the only way to reach them is by redefining, or deconstructing, your approach to signal flow and sound design. Today we're going to deconstruct your idea of rhythm. We're going to create rhythms that do not adhere to a fixed BPM, grid, or feel. Rather, they expand and compress, kind of like a rubber band. In this series, we're going to learn about exponential rhythms, and we will demonstrate five different techniques you can use to achieve them in Ableton Live. For this method, we're going to drag a sample onto a MIDI track. You can use any MIDI instrument or VST you'd like, but for this demonstration we're going to use this kick sample. Now we're going to load the arpeggiator MIDI effect onto the track and set the rate mode to free. By doing so, we decouple the arpeggiator's rate parameter from BPM dependent time divisions and instead control the repetitions of our kick sample in intervals that range from 10 milliseconds to 1000 milliseconds. By holding down any note on our MIDI keyboard and simply moving the arpeggiator's rate parameter up and down, we're able to create rhythms that stretch and squish, depending on whether we're increasing or decreasing the rate value. However, we can exercise a greater amount of precision and intention over our results if we draw in our own parameter automation. Let's load a two bar long MIDI clip and draw a note on middle C. Make sure to press legato to ensure that the note extends to the end of the clip. Now, let's automate the rate by drawing a simple curve over the clip. Notice how different types of curves result in different kinds of rhythms. Notice how after we cross a certain threshold of values, we stop hearing rhythms and start to hear discrete pitches. Once you become comfortable with using the arpeggiator in this fashion, you can begin experimenting with the more complex automation curves. By adjusting the values of each breakpoint, the curve slopes between breakpoints, and even inserting shapes, we're able to finesse our exponential rhythms with an incredible degree of nuance and precision. When practicing a new technique, it is important to listen intently and actively, and pay attention to the sounds that viscerally draw us towards them. Connecting the visual to the sound, 
and learning how to visually replicate sounds that we like to hear. These are some of the most significant skills we must develop as sound designers and artists. While this arpeggiator technique is arguably the most straightforward method for creating exponential rhythms, it's also one of the most powerful and versatile. This is because, for each hit in our rhythm, we're creating a distinct MIDI note event, which means each hit can be recorded and affected as such. If we create a new MIDI track, record on it, and set its input to the arpeggiated kick track, we can resample our rhythms as discrete notes on a new MIDI clip. Doing so gives us the ability to perform rhythmic transformations in the new clip's MIDI note editor, and to manually stretch, compress, or chop up our sequences. Let's give it a try. Now, let's drag the Zap Instrument track onto the MIDI track with our resampled rhythm and take a listen. We used this resampling technique to create the central rhythm in the song, F20 Faith. We resampled the arpeggiator MIDI output from the hi-hat track then used the resulting MIDI clip to drive the rhythms of the bass, strings, and vocal elements in the arrangement. Take a listen. We can further shape the characteristics of our rhythms by experimenting with arpeggiators' various parameters, as well as the parameters of the MIDI instrument being triggered. Modulating the gate parameter will introduce note length variation relative to the current rate value. Playing or feeding chords into arpeggiator will create pitch variation, as well as variation for any key track parameters or effects in your signal flow. Experimenting with the style parameter will affect how arpeggiator interprets your chords. Tonal or harmonic instruments is to create generative rhythmic melodies by using the random MIDI effect after arpeggiator, and then using a scale MIDI effect to quantize the output into a scale, 
or set of pitches that work well together. instruments with built-in low-frequency oscillators, we can use our arpeggiator to trigger random modulation of various parameters. If we enable the low-frequency oscillator's note re-trigger, and set the wave to random or sample and hold, each incoming MIDI note will trigger the low-frequency oscillator to output a random value, which we can then assign to pitch, pan, filter cutoff, and so on. There are a couple of ways to introduce timbral movement and development to your arpeggiated rhythms. The first is quite straightforward. To copy arpeggiator's rate automation and use it on another parameter, such as pitch or filter cutoff. For instance, with our kick sampler instrument, we can copy the rate automation curve, paste it onto the filter cutoff lane, and shape the curve to taste. We're going to use a resonant high pass filter in this case. We'll also pitch the sample up and tighten up the amplitude envelope to create a more clicky sound. The other method is to make use of a resonator effect. We personally enjoy using corpus and grain delay for these kinds of applications. Resonators are an entirely different rabbit hole, but don't worry, we plan to take the deep dive, and do a series on resonators very soon. Well, this concludes the first part of this five-part series. Thank you for spending this time with us. We hope you learned something worthwhile. Take care, practice responsibly, and be kind to yourself. See you in part two. Also please keep in mind that it takes a lot of time, effort, research and patience to create this kind of content. For these reasons we've created a Patreon, so that you can support us directly while you continue your sound design journey. In addition to these tutorial videos, we will be offering tutorial-related sample packs, Ableton racks, and project files, one-on-one -on -one lessons, subscription-only videos, as well as other perks for patrons of our content. We've also created an Instagram, so feel free to hit us up on there, suggest future topics to possibly cover, or just ask how our week was. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. Bye.